Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is, of course, Friday the 8th of May. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for joining us, Alan Ruff. Tom McManus and Barry Ferguson are here with me. And, of course, we always like to start off with our quiz question. Fairly straightforward stuff. Uh, delighted you could join us. Don't forget, like, share and follow us on our Facebook page. And if you get the chance, more and more people subscribing to us on our YouTube channel as well. Hi to George Bruce, James Marshall, Eddie Sneddon, Stephen Hill, Kathleen Madden. So many people off the mark right away. Uh, Patsy says, I'm Tony F is a fan from uh, Swansea as well uh, just joining us. Lots of people on YouTube that I'll give a mention to and I think it would be only right and proper of me to mention some of the people that have been following the show if only because in the next 55 minutes I think the uh, the possibility of laughs are thin on the ground to be perfectly honest with you. Um, anyway, Peter from Galson, uh, from Galson, Peter Gower says we got it wrong yesterday regarding SPFL contacting Aberdeen. He thinks it proves corruption. Uh, thanks, Peter, for the message. Uh, Chris Smith from Harrogate watches every night. Thank you to you, Chris. Bobby Jameson in Canada is wearing his T-shirt when he watches the show, Ruffy. He wears his T-shirt, which just simply says across the front of it, this is not the show for you. Uh, it could, it could, could, be, could be one of those T-shirts we get. It's, the, it's one of those T-shirts to try and uh, fend off the racist bigots and morons and abusive people. Uh, George Humphreys, hi to you. And I've got to say, this is a great one, Ruffy. Uh, and I think Tam and Barry are going to have to get involved in the next two requests we have. This is hi to Kevin McDonald from his wife, Sharon. Uh, he wants to put a shout out to uh, Kevin because he works six days a week so that she could complete her nursing degree. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's magnificent, Ruffy. It's well worth a shout out to Kevin. He watches this when he comes in from night shift. Yeah, uh, well done, Kevin. Uh, obviously, he's putting himself out there, you know, for the, the best interests of his wife, and his wife is doing a particularly good thing. So, yeah, I hope he can he can follow through with that, and uh, everything goes well for both of them. Yeah, uh, probably Tam and Barry are thinking to themselves, maybe I gave out a wee bit too much information there. Now Ruffy knows that Kevin works the night shift, so that he can work out what happens for, for so that he can work out what happens for the other six days. With <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, can see, tell what's going on in that brain. Honestly, it's you can like, see, you can see, you can see, you can see, you can see, dress. You can see yeah. the curtains just flapping away there, can't you? Ruffy's curtains just. Oh. <laughs> they're, they're, I tell you what, they're getting longer by the day, aren't they? The curtains. He's like, yeah, he's like Lion King. I oh, know. I know, oh. I know. Can you? Can, I, I just get this. Something. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I've just got this wee, wee vision in my head as Sharon puts in another great day of nursing and putting herself out there. And then there's a wee knock. Hello, Sharon. It's Ruffy. <laughs> <laughs> is, Ke is Kevin working? <laughs> Anyway, apart from that, uh, let's. I, uh, I well, done, well done, Kevin. Well done, yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Well done. Well You're done, doing a great yeah. job, mate. Super. Just, just watch just it drop off it coming just up, but drop, just drop yeah. off your just drop off your address next time you <laughs> contact. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> apart from apart from the wonderful job that Kevin's doing, well done to Sharon as well. Uh, John McShane lives in Melbourne. Now, this is really for all of you. Um, his daughter, Chloe McShane, it's her 17th birthday. Can Ruffy, Barry and Tam give her a shout out? Now, Chloe's 17. Do you remember when you were 17, Barry? So she'll love a shout out from you. That would be great. Well, I wish I could turn back the clock, Peter, 17. Um, no, yep. I hope she has a great day, 17. My daughter's actually 18 next week, so I'm looking wow. forward to that one. Um, that's when she can get into pubs 
in clubs. Ooh. So she's got another, Chloe's got another year. I know, Tam. Listen, the chains are on, mate. The chains are on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, you imagine getting back, can you imagine getting back and meeting Fergie as a father in law, man? You wouldn't be able to look at her. He'd absolutely yeah. thrill you. <laughs> they'll yeah, get, they'll, they'll be getting booted back out the door. Don't worry about that. Yeah, um, give a shout out to Chloe Tam, it's her 17th birthday. Hi, happy birthday Chloe, I remember when I was 17 as well, I was going to bonkers, our chaos unders, <laughs> uh, and I was on the long road to <laughs> nothingness. A pound a drink, remember that? A pound a drink. A pound a drink, a pound a drink oh, bonkers, up to, up to nine o'clock you used to buy six Budweiser and by the time you got to the fifth one it was roasting, because it was a fiver. <laughs> I have a story about bonkers, Tam, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, uh, Ruffy, Chloe's 17. Yes. You remember yeah, when you were 17? Bur- oh, that's a long, long time ago. But certainly... Uh, <laughs> Black <Blank laughs> night. Look at that look. <laughs> but uh, no, certainly have a good day, Chloe, and uh, a lot of good years in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's a few movies where they actually, I don't know if you've seen them, but they actually, uh, they go back in time and suddenly they become 17 again. Uh, it's it's a fantastic movie. One of the guys, I can't remember his name, but he's a Disney superstar. He was in it called 17 Again. I can just, I don't know about you, Tam, but I can just imagine Tam, uh, Barry suddenly being able to go back to being 17 again. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? The wee shaved head. All right, Skin everybody. Head. Yeah, we Skin all head. Head. coming back. <laughs> Yeah, that skinhead coming back, that skinhead. Fighting with people. Yeah. <laughs> Can I you know, and dancing. Get, here, do you know what I was going to say? If Ruffy gets a skinhead, I'll get a skinhead. There you go. I'll tell you, I'll turn that bit. If I, get, if I get a perm, will you get a perm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say, I'm I'm so delighted that we uh, I'm so delighted that we managed to get a few laughs in because believe me, guys, uh, the next yeah. part of the show we're going to try and read out as many uh, messages as I possibly can that are that are sane uh, along with this whole argument, this whole war um, going on uh, with the, the SPFL and Rangers. But before we get to that, it's perhaps fitting on this day um, that uh, our soccer show <coughs> pays tribute, of course, uh, to the many people who gave their lives 75 years ago, because this is, of course, the E day. Uh, 75 years ago, Winston Churchill announced that the Allies had won the war and the Germans were defeated. Uh, and I think it's a day where many people would be having parties up and down the country but you know when you consider the people who fought in the war my own dad lots of people <clears> from <throat> every denomination uh, fought to try and keep uh, this country uh, safe and well uh, and of course away from the tyranny of Adolf Hitler so I'm sure I speak for everyone uh, with regards to VE Day uh, we will never forget uh, the people who gave their lives uh, and again perhaps fitting uh, that we're now in the middle of a pandemic, so many other people who are not lifting guns but are basically putting their lives uh, right on the line trying to save many of the people here in Britain with this pandemic. So, anyway, I thought it was only right and proper we mentioned that. Uh, we are here as a football show. We want to talk football. Uh, and the last 24 hours has been unbelievable, to say the least. <clears throat> basically, the SPFL today has replied to <clears throat> some of the uh, allegations in the dossier by Rangers and... Off the back of the dossier, uh, Stuart Robertson, the managing director of Rangers, has been going on a few media outlets and talking about the dossier itself. Now, the reply from the SPFL has basically been that the uh, document is baseless, damaging and self-serving attacks. Uh, and they also allege there's a gross breach of confidentiality in that document. And over and above that, there is a serious allegation um, made that Rangers chairman Douglas Park uh, allegedly made a serious allegation and threat to chief executive uh, Neil Doncaster. We don't know what that threat or allegation that he made to Neil Doncaster was, but certainly, just on the evidence of what I've started with, that gives you an indication <coughs> of how uh, heated this is becoming and the anger uh, certainly has been cranked up. So... Let's crack on with, first of all, how it all happened after we came off here yesterday because the dossier was provided. We had already dismissed quite a bit of it and 
backed up quite a few of the points that Rangers made. Let's try and get everything in context here. So quickly, the grievances, Stuart Robertson said, and I was listening to him on Radio Clyde last night, said it's not about Celtic or Rangers or handing over the title. Uh, he, his grievances, the way the information is portrayed and information not revealed to the clubs, he was questioning the governance and process uh, from the SPFL. He's unhappy with the rush to finish the season. He backed up this morning on TalkSport what Stephen Gerrard had said. Uh, and of course, the implication not revealed to clubs about £10 million that would be paid back to Sky in a liability for ending the season prematurely. Um, he reckons there were better ways to get money to the clubs. The explanation was unclear on other ways to get cash. Um, and it, the real sense was he felt the reconstruction talks um, would take place if the resolution was passed. Uh, he said, we have not alleged bullying, coercion or corruption. He said that narrative was elsewhere. Now, we are going to obviously discuss that in a moment. Um, but he said four times the chairman Douglas Park was told to cease and desist. Uh, and of course, you can see on the Rangers Twitter account, it said we will not be bullied into silence. Um, Several clubs are supporting Rangers after reading the dossier, is the claim of Stuart Robertson. Uh, he reckons we need strong leadership. We will consider our options after Tuesday's EGM if we don't get the vote passed. And he's called again. Um, I think we are aware of the fact that Rangers called for the suspension of Neil Doncaster and Rod McKenzie. Now, Ruffy, there are a a number of points that we will uh, delve into there. But again, uh, I don't know if you were privy to any of the conversations, but uh, Stuart Robertson was standing by the dossier and defending some of the points within it. Yeah, well, I think in, in the evidence that's out there, uh, you have to, the two things are for me that you have to decide. Uh, one of them I don't agree with. I don't think they're corrupt uh, for a minute. Do I think they're incompetent? Possibly, in a lot of the decisions that they've made. Uh, there is a lot of answers still to be, be found, I think. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to come out, I still think. And if it is an investigation, we need to clear up some of the things. As I, as I said there just a minute ago, I don't believe the SPL are, are corrupt at all. I don't think they've showed good leadership in a lot of things, particularly, obviously, closing the championship in first and second division the way they did with two days notice. Uh, I know that there's 28 days. I don't see why it couldn't have been seven days or 14 days to make up your mind. And then all the other stuff that's come out after that about the finances. Uh, I just think that they haven't handled it particularly well. And, and these are the small things, I think, that people will want to know. They'll want to know about the phone call, what happened with John Nelms at six o'clock, you know, what was that discussion? How did it take you to half eight to find that uh, lost email things like that need to be answered i mean i'm not going into the 10 million thing and the given the 1.5 million freebie sky because I'm, I'm not that documented on that you know but these things are out there that nobody knew about and if there are things out there you, they've got to be discussed because this this if if this board of spl are not answerable to anything, then they're going to continue down the road that they've went down. And I don't think anybody would agree that they've done particularly well in this whole scenario. Yeah, uh, OK, uh, I know what you're saying, Ruffy, and what I would like to say is that, that, that at no stage are we alleging that the SPFL is unaccountable to anything. I think what they will be is open to the scrutiny uh, of certain aspects of the dossier. Certainly, they've got to answer certain questions um, within that dossier that was submitted to them. Uh, the general feeling was that the dossier was going to provide evidence of bullying, coercion and corruption. That was the main drive of the this term. Uh, and before I read out the SPFL reply on this, which we will dissect, I would say that this, again, much the same as Stuart Robertson has said about it's not about Celtic and Rangers, this is not a show about bashing one club or one organisation or whatever. It's giving out whatever's been presented to us and offering our opinion on it, um, on what we've witnessed, what we've read, what we are led to... Uh, to, to uh, understand from all these documents and the case made against the SPFL. And, of course, remember that some of us actually do call and speak to people and get a real gauge and try and get a balance on this. So just before we get to the point, and we're going to read out a lot of your, your, your points on it, but we're certainly... <clears throat> Fuck's 
not going to be not going to be in a situation where um, we completely and utterly um, are taking one side or the other. This is about a balanced view on it. So with that in mind, uh, Tam, um, what do you make of it? Peter, first and foremost, I think that Rangers at the very start, they dived in far too hastily. You know, calling for suspensions when they didn't have solid evidence to back it up, I think was a big mistake. I think you look at the dossier yesterday, I read through it, 200 pages, it took me a couple of hours. Um, listen, we'd all rather be doing something else, but I think it's important that we give everyone an opportunity to speak and get their views over. So I read through it all, I thought Rangers made a lot of good points, and I think there's, as you said earlier, there's a lot of questions that need answered by the SPFL, and Neil Doncaster in particular. I think an independent investigation would answer them. But the thing was, people were expecting Rangers to come out and really... <coughs> You know, the smoking gun has been mentioned a lot of times. Come up with real solid evidence to back up, you know, calling for suspensions. And they never got that in that dossier. It wasn't there, Peter. And I think that's where a lot of people are saying, well, you know, it wasn't there. I think that basically, you know, they've, they've ran their mouth off too, too, too early and uh, they haven't backed it up at the end. As I said, they've made a lot of good points. Stuart Robertson as well. But they've no hard evidence to call for, for, invest, for investigations and for uh, suspensions. And I think that they've... I think they're, they're barked in the wrong door. If anything, Barry, um, any good points that have been made have so, somehow been lost in in what is now looking uh, like a war between Rangers and uh, the SPFL. And, and more importantly, two people in particular, Rod McKenzie and Neil Doncaster. <coughs> yeah, Peter, you, you used the correct words here. It's going to be a war. And this is going to go on, no just weeks, I think months now. Um, look, I, I'm not like Tam. I, I never read the full 200. I, I waited to people put out the, the bullet points, and there was a couple of points that I totally agreed with with Rangers. Um, I, I think everybody was waiting on whether there was some sort of bullying. I never really seen that in the, the dossier. Um, also, whether it was going to be cohesion or corruption, I never really seen any of that. But what I will say is some of the points that Rangers made. Uh, were very good um, in terms of the ending the season early. There was going to be a, a liability, a certain amount of money um, having to be paid back. Uh, the reconstruction plans, which you know that I'm obviously interested in for uh, Kelly Hart's point of view, that basically it's a, a sham, which I was taken aback um, a bit about. But listen, Peter, this is, this is just two people or two organisations that just really dislike each other. And this ain't going to end any time soon. Any time soon at all. If one Peter, says black, the other one says white. Simple as that. Peter, see if, it, see if Rangers hadn't come out two-footed early doors and just had been calm and thought about it, their dossier would have looked so much better because they did make some really good points, you know, in, in terms of the money and, and different things. <coughs> but the fact, the fact of the matter is, they came out all guns blazing, calling for suspensions and calling for the heads of Doncaster and, and Rod McKenzie. And they haven't backed it up. So that's where they fall flat on their face for me, I'm afraid. See, let, yeah, let's, let's, let's be honest, Peter. Let, let's be honest. Has the SPFL ever really done great things in people's eyes in Scottish football? They, they haven't. They've always, they've well, always had their faults, Peter. Yeah, yeah, but 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 I would I, I, I would I would counter that I would counter that by saying one thing, and I am not believe me when I counter your statement there. I am not in any way a legal representation or trying to defend the SPFL. All I would say to you is the SPFL is the club. The clubs are the SPFL. They determine the way they go ahead. They do it by a democratic vote. They do it by a board that is fully aware of the direction they're taking. They've made mistakes down through the years. They've been driven at times. I think my biggest criticism of them at times has been they've been driven by greed. You only have to look at the stupidity of their deal with Satanta and how they blow Sky Sports out of the water. Um, they've made decisions down through the years. Uh, you know, I've experienced a few myself um, that certainly leave you bemused at why they would come to that decision. But the SPFL is a collective of the clubs. It's not an individual, and it's certainly not a dictatorship, the way that it's being portrayed by Stuart Robertson on this one. Um, the clubs make the decisions. Whether it's too powerful, and some clubs have got more power than others, 
that's another matter to be determined. But I think if we start looking at the SPFL as some kind of elite organisation above the level of the clubs, we are going down the wrong road because the SPFL <coughs> is all clubs in the, the Scottish Professional Football League and they all make the decision collectively. Now let's get on to the reply which came uh, this morning from the SPFL. And, and boy, this one, uh, you know, fired right back. As Barry said, the war has well and truly started. It's underway. Uh, I don't know where it's going to end, but <clears throat> let's deal with the points. Um, the SPFL have obviously written to uh, the clubs to vote against Rangers resolution, which takes place on Tuesday at the EGM. Um, and, uh, and they raised the point, if things were so bad... Why did Stuart Robertson not speak out before calling for the EGM? Uh, I mean, if it was so bad, Ruffy, why not call it? I mean, is it just something that's actually highlighted itself over the last week or so? Why is the need now, if it was so bad and dysfunctional, why not step forward earlier? Well, again, Peter, uh, we're going into legal jargon again, or whatever he's called. <laughs> I don't know procedures. <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I definitely don't. I definitely don't know what you have to do to call an EGM or the procedure you have to get down. Uh, it seems to me that uh, they've thrown it open to the the clubs. You've you've made a good point there. It's the clubs that pay the SPFL board. It's they them that pay the salaries. So it's up to them to decide. You know whether there is investigation here. It's up to them to decide. You know, has the governance of, of our game been wrong in the last three or four years? And I think that's what we should be looking at rather than corruption and people doing dodgy things. I don't think there's any of that at all. But you certainly have to look at some of the things that's come out from that vote of the Championship First and Second Division. And I know, I know that the SPL have tried to do it, you know, with the Deloitte thing. But the more and more things that keep coming out here, there must be other things floating about that we don't know about. Uh, and well, we'll have to well, wait and well, see whether they come out as well. Well, hold on a minute, Ruffy. If you think there are other things that are floating about, do you think there should be an independent investigation? Will Partick Thistle vote for it? I, I think an investigation would be good for everybody to, to get to the, 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 the points that we want to know. We want to know <laughs> what happened in that vote. What happened in that vote? You've touched on it already. Why, why was Neil Doncaster phoning John Nelms at 6 o'clock all these things, why was he phoning Inverness and Dundee to say, if you don't vote no, then there'll be less money for you uh, in the long run? There's lots of things that, that, that people want to know about. Hold, hold, hold on, Ruffy. Hold on, Ruffy. I've got to correct you there. Uh, Neil Doncaster would would not phone anybody and say, if you don't vote this way, there'll be no, there won't be the I, same I, money I, for I, you in the long I, run. All I'm saying is, I, why, I, did he, I, why did he phone him? And why did they announce the vote before? Dundee casted their vote. Well, again, and, I, and I've got to be really careful here, Ruffy. Neil Doncaster would have would have called and advised and discussed with many clubs, many clubs, um, what the procedure was, what the situation was. Um, you know, some people might call it lobbying. Some people might call it an explanation of what is what is uh, what is at stake. But you know, there was no calls made on the basis of. You must do this. I have to clarify that. Um, with regards to the SPFL answering the questions that Stuart Robertson and the dossier um, put forward, these are the serious ones. And this is the this is the area where I think it's going to be very interesting to see how it all transpires because it could end up in court. So let's tread carefully on this. And if you are writing a message, please try and keep it careful on what you're saying because uh, the last thing you need to do is jump in with both feet with no information on this. Uh, with the point with regards to Douglas Park, um, as far as the bullying and the coercion, Rangers chairman Douglas Park made a serious allegation and threat to Chief Executive Neil Doncaster. This was one of the first points that the SPFL um, have put out there in reply, which is, again, uh, something that, what was the threat? What was the allegation? We don't know. But at four occasions, Rangers were told to cease and desist from this line. Um, so that's the first thing. Gross breaches of confidentiality of sensitive information from within the SPFL are in the Rangers dossier. So that has repercussions after Tuesday. I think someone is going to be in trouble 
for breaching those rules, which mean that anything that is within an SPFL document, which is sensitive material, cannot be leaked. Who did it? Who's in trouble? Uh, the next part that they deal with is clubs understood that ending the season could lead to claims being made against the SPFL. Uh, making this information public was against every at the interests of every club. Now, on this basis, it's the £10 million of potential liabilities not disclosed. Again, the SPF, SPFL have explained that situation, and I think Hugh McDonald made a valid point yesterday, which is quite simply, ending the season could be £10 million of liabilities. Tam, declaring it null and void, could be another set of circumstances that would bring about even more financial liabilities. Null and Void's never blown the cards for me, Peter. Um, I think you look at the amount of money that it could, it could cost clubs and TV money, you know, fans maybe wanting season ticket money back, you know, Rangers and Celtic in particular and UEFA, you know, what happens with their money, that's Null and Void as well. You know, ranking points in, in, in Europe, you know, it was never on the cards, um, Null and Void. And listen, I don't think anybody really seriously thought it was anyway. Maybe, maybe, maybe a few... A few Rangers fans maybe thought that, but for me it was never ever it was never on the cards. And uh, you know, I think the right decision is, is to is to end the season now and, and, and as the standings as they are and look towards next season. I've always said that, Peter. Yeah. Peter. Peter, I have got no problem with the, the season ending early. See as the weeks go on, we all know and we've said in this show that there's going to be absolute no chance of the, the season e ending. And I had no problem with that for the SPFL, but I still think you have got to notify the clubs of a possible liability if you are going to end the season early. That's what I'm saying. I think you've got to notify the clubs and let them know that. Um, I have no problem with SPFL doing that and declaring champions. I have no problem at all. But I think when you're going to be doing that and it's in your thoughts, I think then you have got to tell your member clubs that there well, is a possible liability and there might not be an amount of money coming towards you. Well, remember, uh, that at this point, the SPFL today have said that the clubs were aware of liabilities, yep, that that. Were, yep. liabilities yep. were coming. But the resolution, yeah, who do you believe? To end the pre well, the resolution to end the Premiership was not, was not passed yet. It hadn't been voted on. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. this is, and again, I would emphasise that we are just at this moment relaying mm -hmm. one point from one end and one from the other. Yeah. Then we'll give you and an Peter, opinion. Can I say, you, you read Rangers' dossier yesterday, and that's one of the things that jumped out at me. Like everybody, I would imagine, the £10 million. And then today, three or four hours ago, the SPFL released a statement saying that they had told all the 42 clubs, and I think that's the way you've got to do it. So who do you believe you? What, what's going on? Well, the, the, the next part of it, and again, it's a good point you make, and we'll digest it and discuss it right now, um, because both of them have uh, made the point, tit for tat. We'll discuss it in a second or two, because we'll get back to the rest of the SPFL uh, reply, um, that clubs could only receive cash by voting for the resolution. Um, they say it wasn't the case. Loans and, of course, the insolvency fears uh, and the time consumption on that and the evidence of Gretna um, was what the SPFL highlighted with regards to it only being about you were only getting your money if you voted for the resolution. So th that was their reply to that. Now, um, there was also uh, a condemnation of Rod McKenzie, uh, who offered no meaningful assistance to drafting Rangers' resolution. Um, and again, the SPFL and Rod McKenzie said they engaged with the company secretary of Rangers, uh, but the resolution that they were putting forward remained ineffective throughout. Rangers also could have consulted a QC on this, but they declined to do so. Um, and of course, the other point, the SPFL and the SFA wrote to UEFA saying the vast majority wanted the curtailment of the campaign. And the SPFL this morning said, yeah, that part of the dossier is correct. We accept that because of generally the feeling we were getting from courting the, uh, you know, the advice from most of the clubs was that they were in favour of that. 81% eventually. So that's where we're at with it. Um, and, I, and I look at it, Ruffy, and, and the £10 million <coughs> that would be uh, a penalty uh, to the clubs if this season was curtailed early. 
uh, is something that I think a lot of people was it made was it made did they do enough to make it known? They may well have made but it known in, so, in some quarters, yeah. but did they do enough? And 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 again, we go back to the point here: by not doing enough or by not revealing enough, does that suggest? You know, when you get to the, the votes and when you get to all the information that was out there, does it suggest bullying, coercion and corruption of Neil Doncaster and Rod McKenzie? Because Stuart Robertson came out today on TalkSport and he did it yesterday on uh, Radio Clyde. He basically said that that narrative was changed and that that's not what, we, what they were actually suggesting, bullying, coercion or corruption. Well, I'm sorry, but... You you only have to look at two or three uh, instances where Rangers did indeed suggest bullying and coercion yeah. uh, in some of the yeah, press it, releases. So Stuart Robertson yeah. is wrong in that statement. No, I think he is wrong. It, it depends on how you want to interpret bullying. You know, obviously Rangers are interpreting bullying by Mr. McKenzie phoning whoever it was at Rangers and, and telling them four times, you better watch what you're doing. They they. Whatever he did then. That they could they could say that was bullying. They could turn that into your your bullying is in to make a decision here. You know, we'll make a decision for sale. You could you could turn it whatever you no, really no, want. No, 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 hold on a minute, Ruffy. They were told to cease and desist because of a defamatory statement. In the, uh, towards Neil Doncaster. Let's not start to miss the facts here. He was told four times to cease and desist because of allegations against Neil Doncaster, defamatory things as well, which could result in legal action. It's got nothing to, uh, at, at the end of it, what happened was Rangers said we will not be bullied into silence. But the SPFL have explained what we don't know is what he did say that was defamatory towards Neil Doncaster. We don't know that. But that's where that instance was. You, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to go two and no, two please. makes five on this. That point there was he was told to cease and desist because, according to the SPFL, there were allegations in there towards right. Neil Doncaster and something that was defamatory. Okay, but you're now telling me that the SPFL have said that they were bullied by Donald Park. You read that. No. Out? No, no. Did you not no, read no, that earlier? I, on no, an no, I, no, I, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, it was an what aggressive... I to, uh, what, what, I, what I said to you was that there was no evidence of bullying or coercion from the... Uh, the SPFL said there was no evidence of bullying or coercion or indeed of corruption supplied in that dossier. And remember, this is, a, this is Rangers who've called for the suspension of... Rod McKenzie, Neil Doncaster, pending an investigation in their mind. Yeah, no, so I'm it's talking not, it, about. It's, no, I'm talking about when you read out there the SPFL's uh, statement they get put out that they, they, they've let everybody know that they were also, you know, in a conversation with Donald Park. Did you not read that out? It's Doug, it's Douglas Park. Douglas, Douglas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you it's not Douglas read that Park. out? No, oh, basically. Tell, tell me that bit again. Basically. <laughs> Basically, <clears throat> the SPFL have released a, a, a document this morning, Ruffy. Yeah, just which the claims, part bit. Which, which, just refutes, the part bit. which refutes the suggestions made in the dossier from Rangers. One of them was, and this is, that Rangers chairman Douglas Park made a serious allegation and threat to Chief Executive Neil Doncaster. We don't know what the threat was. We right. don't know what the allegation was. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that the SPFL were being bullied under right. any but, circumstances. Yeah, what did, prompted did we know after any, that? Did, did we know anything about that, that before today? Why had not, had not come out before? That's what I mean. There's too many things that nobody knows anything about that's been kept, whatever it's been kept, and nobody knows anything about it. No, but what I'm saying but, to you is, I, 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 I can tell you for a fact right now that many an organisation, whether it's radios, whether it's uh, the TV, whether it's our broadcast here, there are a number of issues which we are all in the dark about. We can only deal with the issues that have come from Rangers dossier, which as Barry has mentioned, they make valid points, but we can only deal with the facts that are released to us according to Rangers, and the facts according to the SPFL. What you can't do is you can't take them all as absolute 100%. All we can do well, is take it at face value. And the one thing is, 
Rangers were told to cease and desist on four occasions because of allegations of a threat to Neil Doncaster and defamatory statements. Now, at that point, Rangers said they wouldn't be bullied into silence. Well, that's where your bullying comes to, surely, then. But that's nothing to do with SPFL being bullied, Ruffy. That's Rangers saying no. they wouldn't be bullied into silence. And Stuart Robertson has claimed in the last 24 hours, on two separate occasions, that that wasn't his narrative. Well, that was his narrative because the club has tweets on it, the club has it on a statement, and the club has actually suggested it on two previous occasions. One of them was April the 10th. Um, so, quite simply, we're in a situation here where we have to now wait for the vote on Tuesday. <coughs> and if they don't get the vote that they're looking for, then, Tam McManus, Rangers are going to contemplate something else. They'll wait and see if they're going to get the backing on this vote. But we've got a tip for well, chat here, and there are very a, a number of grey areas, but I think the serious one is, is definitely the threat to Neil Doncaster. I think that's a serious one. I think, as Barry mentioned there, the £10 million. Pounds, it, should they have done more to let people know of the penalties? That's another question. I wonder if they've got the transcripts, supposedly from Douglas Park, to Neil Doncaster. You know, was it a phone call? Was it an email? Was it a text message? You know, have, they got the, have they got those available? Um, that, that's one thing I, I'm, I'm just thinking about here. Um, the other thing is, is the EGM in, in Tuesday. You know, there seems to be a lot of journalists, particularly in social media, who are proclaiming that chief executives or chairmen are texting them during a live show and saying that they've been bullied. I won't name names, but I think we know who we're talking about here. I wonder if those chairmen or those, those the, the chief executives will come forward on Tuesday and back up those claims that they were bullied and, stick, and stand behind Rangers. See, yeah, I don't, Peter, can I, I, I say I something about bullying? See, bullying... Bu Bullying might be a harsh word used here. Phone calls go on between people. Aggressive nature if you phone up and think, well, why are you going with that decision? Come on, this is the way to go forward. It happens, not just in football. It happens in all walks of life. So sometimes I think bullying's getting, it's a strong word to use. Very strong word. You've got to back up. Well, right, have, yeah, as, uh, listen, I agree with you, it's got to be backed up, but I think phone calls have been made between not just Rangers and other clubs, all different clubs will speak to each other. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And they'll try and maybe force their hand a wee bit, whether it's aggressive across the, the line, who knows, but bullying is a, it's a harsh word to use. And well, we need to the see other the clear thing evidence of that. John Johnson has said, why are you not asking the SPFL to produce evidence of the threat from uh, Douglas Park? Well, with all due respect, said that? Yep. It's, it, it's just come out this morning and mm. the due mm. process, and it will be due process, the SPFL, and particular Neil Doncaster and Rod McKenzie, have a decision to make, which is quite simply, when they look at the evidence and when they look at the way this is going, do they want to actually pursue legal action against uh, Douglas Park? That's for them. I don't know what the inside of that is. One of the things I'm not going to do is I'm not going to get involved in what person or chairman or best mate phoned <coughs> a, a, another pundit on another station or on Twitter, you know, the people that are getting leathered on Twitter. I can only on this programme try and give you as fair uh, an assessment of what's been said by Stuart Robertson and Rangers and what's been said in reply, these are these are things that have come out. I'm, I, I'm not for a minute saying that I'm one side or the other, and I don't think Tam and Barry and Ruffy are. Ruffy may well have a, a, a swaying based on the fact that he speaks with the Partick Thistle board. I can't second guess that. I can only give you what's been released, and then we can offer our assessment on it. Yesterday, I offered an assessment, Barry, that I thought that Rangers, if they don't get the vote on Tuesday, might contemplate legal action to try and go to court to take it a step further. Having listened to Stuart Robertson and his backtracking, I don't think they will go to court. I think they will look at this, and if they don't get the vote, I think they've backed themselves into a corner. That's just my opinion on the situation. I think there are two issues here which they're in trouble for. One of them is 
if there was leaking of sensitive information, that's a breach of the SPFL rules. Who did it? Was he employed at Rangers? And is it a situation where that position is untenable for the person who leaked it, if indeed he is known? Are they making the suggestion that that information in the Rangers dossier was private SPFL information and should not have been released and certainly shouldn't be out in the public domain? So that person is in, in trouble. That's the, that's the first part of this. And the second most serious one is quite simply that the SPFL have alleged that there was, and I'm looking at it here, a serious allegation and threat to Chief Executive Neil Doncaster. And I don't know about you, Barry, but those two things are mm -hmm. screaming out at me. Yeah, they are. Uh, as Tam says, listen, do we know? We, we don't know whether it was a phone call, if it was recorded or not. We'll never know until the SPFL let that be known uh, if they've got it in some sort of capacity, Peter. But I'll be honest with you, I hope it doesn't go to court because this is just going to roll on for... Uh, you know what it's like, Peter. Things go to court, they go on for months and months. And this is the last thing we need up here. The way... Things are going with the virus. We've got to start thinking about the future of Scottish football and all this tit for tat and calling each other out. Rangers yesterday came out with a dossier, which, listen, I've told you, I agreed with quite an amount of it. Then the SPFL came out today with their statement replying to that, and it's two different, two different um, answers. So we just need to wait and see, Peter. And it'll be interesting on Tuesday, Peter, to see the vote. Rangers have obviously come out, Shirts come out and said that he has got the, the backing of a number of, of chairman and chief exec. So we know they've got hearts and strength at this moment in time. We just need to wait and see if they've got any more. The proof will be in the pudding, I think, on Tuesday. It will the be. The votes will come in. Ruffy, do you get a sense that uh, you'll be voting, you, your club would be voting in favour or against? Uh, I haven't got that sense yet. They're still in the negotiations. Uh, they're taking everything on board. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when they eventually do come to a decision uh, which way they go down. They'll obviously be phoning all the other clubs like everybody else seems to be doing just now. So <coughs> I think I said to you there, there's, there's too many things you just said that are just that coming that. out. There's things just coming out. You know, have a wee bit of this, taste that. Here, have, have a feed of this. There's, there's far too many things just getting let out now that we never knew anything about. And you're right, the £10 million one, if it was thrown out at the beginning when the clubs had to make a decision to throw the league up in the air, would it have been a major factor in people uh, deciding what they were going to do rather than if you don't vote, you don't get the money right away? These things are, 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 are past now, so you've got to really just decide what you're going to do with the whole thing. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, read as many of the messages <clears throat> as possible, but uh, I have to tell you, um, as ever, um, you know, quite a, quite a number of them are uh, poisonous, to say the least, and uh, don't merit us trying to read them out. I mean, uh, one in particular uh, from Brian Scotland uh, has suggested that, uh, you know, I am basically championing the SPFL and when anybody else says something that I don't like, then I am raising the tone of my voice uh, to shout them out and cut them off. Well, Brian Scotland, let me tell you this. This programme is about dealing with things that do not get us into a situation where we are embroiled in court nonsense for saying something that is incorrect. What we are doing and this is not the show for you, is our catchphrase. What we are doing is relaying what Rangers said in their dossier, relaying the contents of the discussion that Stuart Robertson said, and then relaying to you the reply that's come today from the SPFL. The only comments we've made, and I've made it, and I'll tell you right now why I made it, because we've looked at the evidence, and I think Stuart Robertson will not go for court action on behalf of Rangers. I don't think they'll go down that road. I think they'll look at the vote. I think they'll lose the vote. But I don't think... I thought they might go to court action because they feel that strongly about it. But my only observation and opinion at this moment is there are two serious things. From the evidence that's been given to us by Rangers and by the SPFL, two things scream out. And they are, quite simply, the allegations and the defamatory statements that we don't know what they are, that were made threats to Neil Doncaster from Douglas Park. That's what the SPFL said. Not Peter Martin, not somebody else on this show. 
And the other one is that evidence, sensitive evidence from the SPFL was apparently in that dossier, which was a breach of the rules. We're not saying it's right or wrong. We're just telling you exactly what the SPFL said. So there are people who'll come on and listen to the programme and post their little abusive messages, and some of them are absolutely outrageous. But we're just giving it to you from Rangers' perspective and the war and the SPFL's reply to it. If you don't like it, there's nothing I can do about it. We are offering our opinion on it. I don't know about you, Tam, but I, I, again, selective hearing abounds across Scotland at the moment with this war. But right now, Rangers have raised some really good issues which are lost in this now. Because mm -hmm. apart from, obviously, Stuart Robertson having to backtrack um, on bullying and coercion, which is documented, we can't get away from it. I think that I think the 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 fact is that if SPFL are guilty of things, it's maybe that they. I think Stuart Robertson wanted them to be more clear, more transparent, more uh, you know helpful in a number of issues that he feels the clubs were not aware of. Yes, I think. Listen, I think that's what Stuart Robertson's main point is. You know, he wanted a more competent SPFL. He wanted things done more properly. Um, he hasn't got that, but. As you said, his interview last night on Clyde, you know, he's co totally contradicting himself and the Rangers, several Rangers statements and their social media in terms of the bullying. You know, that has been in, in a few statements coming out from Rangers. Stuart Robertson went on and blatantly, for me, it, it, you know, he just, he just lied. So I think that's where you've got to look at it as well. The SPFL, I think, have been in, guilty of incompetence. I think everybody knows um, that there's certain incompetence has went on. I don't think there's any corruption, any bullying. And, uh, you know, if it has been, then, then let's prove it. You know, let's get an, investi an independent investigation. But I think Rangers should be paying for it. Peter, I think you, you made a great point there. I think some of the things in the, the Rangers dossier have been overlooked. Some very good, valid points. And obviously with the, the stuff that's going on now, as you say, people are forgetting about the uh, <coughs> good points and just going ahead with what we've been talking about the last 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there are some issues, and, and nobody, I don't think anybody on this show, Ruffy, has suggested that the SPFL are beyond reproach. They should be scrutinised. They should be constantly asked questions. They should, on a number of occasions, say, listen, we are not performing at the best of our abilities. We have to go through a learning curve. The minute you stop, uh, you know, questioning yourself, trying to better yourself, then the game's up. If it was a dictatorship, which is which is basically a suggestion that's come out, they're looking for they're looking for more of leadership rather than a dictatorship, is how Stuart Robertson put it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if there is a situation like that, the, the SPFL needs to have a look at itself. It has made mistakes, and we've highlighted them. Every pundit on this program has. Yeah, that's why I think when you come to making a decision, you know, about going, you have to take the Rangers scenario out the out the out the equation. You know, take the whatever's going on with Rangers and the SPL and try and make a decision on the things that you've just said there. Are they have, have they been good leadership? Have they made the right decisions? You know, are they answerable to other things? Not not going down the road of one person against the other and look at the whole picture because the 42 clubs as you said you know are, are the people who pay the spfl to look after our game and, and to act accordingly and you're right questions have to be asked you know but you don't get these questions unless you push it a wee bit further <laughs> Colin Gibson says, Stuart Robertson never said there was bullying. He said it was reported by clubs. There is a difference. This will go to court, mark my words. Colin, um, I have to say, uh, Stuart Robertson or Rangers, on the April the 10th, we will not be silenced by bullies, was a statement that came out um, by Rangers. Um, so, uh, you know, Stuart Robertson mentioned that bullying and coercion was not part of any narrative from Rangers. Well, it's documented, um, so he has to stand by it and defend it at some point. Um, as far as we're concerned, looking at this whole issue, um, talking up claims made by companies against the SPFL would be inappropriate and against the interests of every club, was one of the statements they made, which is to do with the Sky deal. Um, I think 10 million is a considerable amount of money, 
But dare I say at this point, Tam, that I think everybody... Now, the SPFL said that they made the clubs aware of this, um, but there was no vote on the SPFL Premiership at that point. It hadn't been resolved. But I think everybody, and we've been talking about it from the implications of the English Premier League, as, as early as four weeks ago, we were talking about the fact that people were not calling leagues because, quite simply, there was a huge financial implication. Everybody knew that. Now, were, were there any clubs in the dark about that? Everybody knew the implications four or five weeks ago. If you call your league early, Sky will be wanting money back. BT might be wanting money back. Sponsors might be wanting money back. Season ticket holders might be wanting money back. It didn't take a Philadelphia lawyer to work that one out, Tom. No, no, it didn't. It didn't, Peter. Listen, it's... The, the, the Sky deal, the money, you know, I think the clubs are just desperate desperate for any sort of money, you know, and listen, null and void, you know, if, if you go down that road, it's, it's, it's a similar thing, you know, in, in terms of the Sky money as well, you're not going to get any money. So, listen, uh, you know, me personally, you know, and I'm sure the guys are the rest of the, the panel are, are kind of, kind of sick talking about it. Um, we keep seeming to be going over and over the same things again. Um, there's not going to be any football. We've said this for, for weeks on this show. Till June, July, August. Players' contracts run out in June the thirtieth. Um, you know, some clubs might not have a team to field if we keep, uh, you know, dragging this season out. You know, they might not have a team to field uh, when it comes to July and August. So, for me, I've always said that you know, you call the league, you know, you call the league now, and uh, and you look towards next season and, and reconstruction and trying to get some other maybe other teams in the league and protecting clubs that are potentially getting relegated and have been shafted like the likes of Hearts, the likes of Partick Thistle. The likes of Stranraer and you bring Broder up and no team is, is disadvantaged. So I think you've got to look at the positives and look ahead to next season now because this season is just not going to finish. <clears throat> well, not only that, Barry, but we still haven't even got to the point of whether they're going to expand the leagues or not. That's another that's another we haven't there's there's two other wars to come. This is this is a non stop war. The war between Rangers and the SPFL, which is not our war, we're just explaining the situation and offering our opinion on it. But the next one is Celtic being awarded the title and then after that the reconstruction talks if it doesn't go according to plan. That's the next two major, major Ferraris coming on the horizon. Yep, and when I, uh, when I read what Ranger said regarding the reconstruction, that it was a sham that the, I think they had to tell the I think broadcasters, let the broadcasters know something. You would need to correct me if I'm wrong here, Peter. And they hadn't done that. Um, look, I just worry what, what way Scottish football is going forward, Peter. Um, look, we've been talking about it for two years. I think it's about time we change something up here. Go with reconstruction, make a decision, and then further down the line, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, decide what way you're going to go. 14, three tens, two fourteens, and a 16. But I do think we need to expand and try something different. Um, but I don't know if I don't think there was a reply that came out for the SPFL regarding that and uh, the statement, Peter. You would you would need to let me know that regarding oh, the no. SPFL. Re yeah, because Rangers, I think Rangers had mentioned that it wasn't going to happen. It was a sham or something like that. The reconstruction. Yes. Well, I I think what they are going to look over is fourteen, fourteen, sixteen. Now, whether that gets to a vote or not, I think we're about to find out because first and foremost, before all the, all the clubs can vote on it, what we're led to believe is that it needs to get an 11-1 vote, Ruffy, to get it passed, first of all, from the Premiership clubs. And then the other leagues, 75% of them need to vote in favour of it to go to 14, 14, 16. Yeah, yeah, you've just yeah. highlighted, you know, how hard that's going to be. Uh, we've already <laughs> saw a vote that was all over the place. Uh, so this one, again, uh, is going to be a, a big, big decision. I would like to think that once we've got this sorted out, this will go into the, the burner uh, and let Rangers do what they want to do. Uh, and then we can really talk about the, 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 the things that are going to move the game on, because I think that's what everybody wants. We just want to move on and make our game better. Rob Reed says, Peter, you were shouting to get the league called three or four weeks ago. Uh, Rob, I must apologise for listening to government officials, medical officers uh, and various other people who actually have been looking at this virus. 
uh, and calling out what the implications are and how long we're going to be in lockdown. Um, we're another three weeks on, Rob. Um, and three weeks ago, I haven't changed my opinion. You're going to have to call the league. They've dragged it out. It's now at the end of May. You're not going to get a ball kicked. I said it four weeks ago we weren't going to get a ball kicked. Not because I'm some great doctor or have a great insight. I was looking at all the evidence and reading as much as I possibly can on what is happening across the world. And quite simply, with no testing and tracing of any great significance in this country, with no app in place, with no vaccine in place, a number of people from the government and from the medical profession have said the chances of anyone getting together, 50,000 watching sport before September, possibly the end of this year, is remote. Now, if that doesn't tell you that nobody's kicking a ball, I do not know what does Tom McManus. No, it's not going to happen, Peter. We've been saying it for weeks now. You know, this season's finished. You know, there's more important things to look at. Health. You know, the Scottish government need to support football clubs now because there might not be any fans coming into the, the grounds. You know, according to Rod Petrie, you know, according to the, the health organisation in Scotland, there might not be any fans coming in this year. How are clubs going to survive? That is the main issue we should be talking about. Not the tit for tat with the SPFL and Rangers. How are clubs going to survive? Because I'm telling you that now there's going to be clubs that die. There's going to be clubs that go under mm -hmm. in the next couple of months if there's no money coming in. And that's what we should be focusing on and not the nonsense of elsewhere. Peter, of course, there is the, there Peter, is the suggestion, Barry, of clubs needing money from the government. Help. The same yeah, way yeah. Rugby League was helped. Yeah, but I've seen Neil, Gon uh, Neil Doncaster sorry, come out with a statement that they might need to get some uh, government backing. And I'm sure, listen, it's a number one sport up here, Peter. And as Tam just said there, rightly, I, I worry. I worry about some clubs going forward. Because um, for me, what you just mentioned there, I've been saying it for since we went into lockdown, there's no chance there's any go, uh, any football going to get played, Peter. Never mind what, what you say is 50,000 fans. At my level, 500, 600 fans, they're not going to allow that. They're not going to allow that number of people into a stadium to be together. So... I worry about the welfare um, and the, the survival of, of clubs and players, Peter. We tend to forget about players yep. as well. There's guys going out of contract, there's guys get bills to pay, there's not going to be any football for months. This is the serious stuff that we should be making sure that we get 100% bang on instead of all the stuff should that's going on between on the SPFL. Ah, yeah, listen, it's getting to a stage where I'm absolutely... I'm, I'm sick of it, you know what I mean? There's more important yeah. things, Peter. Survival of Scottish football, and I know we've got to talk about it. I get that. I totally get it. It's big talking points, but the survival of clubs and the welfare of footballers going forward is the main Peter, point for me. Peter, Peter, um, I know you, you, you said that the SPFL, obviously, coming back with their, their talk today, uh, to Ranger statement was the big news, but for me, the big news... And the big article today was, was Barry Ferguson's column in a newspaper um, where he spoke about how he, how he found out about the 200-page dossier. And I'll, I'll, read, I'll read this quote out. Um, Much of the dossier is outside my range of expertise. I'm a football guy. While I was out shopping for essentials in Lark Hall, I had someone shouting from across the street asking if I'd seen the Rangers statement. I shouted back, no, no mate, I've not seen it yet. He replied, it's 200 effing pages, son. I shouted back, it's 200 pages. If that's the case, then there's no chance of me reading it, mate. I think that's the big oh, news wait. of the day. I think we should focus on that. <laughs> yes. <Yep>. Yeah. <laughs> I waited for, you know, I read, I, for Peter bringing out the bullet points. That's what I, I'll read the bullet points. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in reading it 200 pages. The, it's yeah, the best article I've ever read. I have to I say, uh, that point, say fucking lap call. Staunch, exactly. staunch, son. You all right up there? Uh, yeah. Uh, after today's show, I, I, I don't think I'll be shopping up there. Um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, when uh, when Tam and I when Tam and I read it, we thought to ourselves, let's send oh, let's send Barry some books. Let's send Barry uh, books because he doesn't read Tom, them. Tam, you never anyway. read that too. Listen. Peter, I did, I read it this morning. I've got every belief that you've sat there and you've been over it and over it with a fine, fine tooth comb. 
Tam, no chances he read that <laughs> 200 <laughs> page. Yeah. And Ruffy well, <laughs> doesn't even know the 200 page dossiers out. Yeah, Ruff, yeah, Ruffy doesn't even know. No, Ruffy doesn't even know who's been. He doesn't even know who's been bullied into silence. That's why I'm shouting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm quite happy with the bullet points. Yeah, uh, uh, no, that's uh, well, the best to, way, Ruffy. To, to be fair, um, you know, and and again, I can't. I, I appeal to people who um, are of a sound nature, and we're never going to get all of them on this program. That's fine. I, I mean, there are people who who actually hate you or are. are they shout abuse and, and mention it on here and they leave a lot to be desired. That's fine. We have to take that. That's great. I, you know, I can put up with it. I'm big enough, bad enough, uh, you know, about people who are vitriolic in some of their posts. It's fine. Some of them actually will never listen to what you say because they live, we live in a country where they want to tag you, uh, you know, and they tag you in disparaging and abusive ways. That's fine as well. All we can do is stay true to what we've been delivered by Rangers in their dossier, which we were waiting on. And then from there, and I think Hugh McDonald on yesterday's show as well, and I think all our pundits, Alison McConnell, Darren Jackson, uh, everyone, uh, and, and I include you three guys on it as well, have tried to react to what has been put out in front of us. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, the people who actually want to absolutely, uh, you know, nail you because of whatever, your race, creed, colour, background, beliefs, whatever. We've got no time for them on this show. I think Bobby, who's out in Canada, is right. If you're of a bigoted, racist or abusive persuasion, this isn't the show for you. You know, you need to go on with all the other, as I call them, nung nuts and dafties who <laughs> sit and talk about the same thing and believe whatever comes out of their best mate or their club. We have actually highlighted that Rangers have made good points that the SPFL need to look at. The SPFL need to have a look at themselves with mistakes they've made, and I think they're big enough to do that as well. My personal opinion on this whole situation, Ruffy, is that I think Stuart mm. Robertson's in an untenable position on the board now. I don't see how he can continue. <clears throat> I think it. I, I think that the, the wounds are too deep, and I think over and above that, and I mentioned this about six or seven weeks ago before we had all this crap I mentioned that someone needs to be a leader to bring Rangers back into the fold and to build bridges. Now remember, this is a club that is at war with the national broadcaster and has been for three or four years, if not longer. You know, this is a club that many of their fans think everybody hates us and we don't care. That is not the way forward in Scottish football. Someone needs to take a lead and bring Rangers back into the fold and get people actually all talking together instead of a group of people who are now digging their heels in and thinking that everybody is against them, which is a complete load of nonsense. What you have to deal with here is deal with the facts and then from there, try and smooth it out and go forward together. People are dying. We can't play football. So what? At the end of the day, if the league gets called, so what? It's called. People are dying. We might lose money, but people are dying. This is a COVID virus which has been going now for six, seven, eight weeks longer, and we've lost a lot of people. But what we have in this stupid West of Scotland bigoted country is a group of daft people arguing <clears throat> and taking this tribal attitude to it. Somebody needs to make a stand and say, stop, you need to get together. We need to sort out our differences. We need to move forward together. And that's the way ahead. You can't look back. If somebody has a motivation that well, let's get Neil Doncaster because <laughs> when Rangers went into liquidation, they were in the third division. And let's get somebody for that. We're not happy. If somebody's looking back that way, you need your head looked. Right now, we need to actually look and say mistakes have been made on both parts, but we need to move forward together for the benefit of everybody in Scotland, not just for one club who's arguing it out and then other clubs who are all divisive in this. We need to get someone to get everybody back round the table, get peace to break out, and then move forward as a nation instead of everybody looking into our country and thinking, look at that crew. 
Look at that crew. Look at that crew of people. Look at that Scottish football. You're embarrassing. And this is embarrassing. 24 hours, I'm absolutely disgusted at the conduct in it. And that's why we're debating it. And I'm listening to people here <laughs> on this feed, on YouTube and Facebook. Honestly, their upbringing and the language they're using is unbelievable. It would take me seven hours to block some of the crap that's on here. We need to get round a table and bring Rangers back into the fold and let peace break out. That's what we need. We need sensible approach to this and we need people to say, this is what's at stake. This is how we move forward to save clubs and players and families' lives. Peter? Yeah, but yeah I, that was I agree a... with everything you've said there, but uh, you're right, mm. you know. We need we need everything that comes out from now until the next month of everything you've spoken about. It has to be constructive. It has to be, you know, we know agenda's going to be out here. Just look at the facts that are there and decide whether you like them or you don't like them. Do you want to move on with, with other leadership or do you want to keep that leadership on board? And that's the decisions. It can't be about, you know, a club against an association. It's got to be about the facts that are out there for everybody. Peter. Peter. That Peter, was do you know what? You're bang on. Uh, you're bang on. Everybody makes mistakes. The SPFL have made a few mistakes, whether the vote was too quick over 40, uh, 48 hours. And they've made previous mistakes in previous years. And Rangers have made some mistakes as well. And I think you're bang on about that. Put it in the past. Try and move on. Try and get around the table and get together and move forward. And try and get... Scottish football back to where we want it at a very Peter, good level and survive that this. Was up there. That was up there with Al Pacino on any given Sunday. I had a wee tear in my no, there Al as you marched through that. No, no. That was, yeah, no, it was no as good as Al Pacino. Peter. It was decent. No, but it, it, it was decent. good. It's but it was, it, it was from the heart, wasn't it? It was from the heart. It really was. Well, well, uh, well. to be honest with I you, Tom, him. I mean, the funny, the funny thing about it is, I mean, honestly, you know what this country's like? You know, that was one of the reasons why I enjoyed 12 years of, of uh, being in Edinburgh. And, and the east of Scotland has its bigotry and, and problems as well. Um, but since coming back here, I'm married to a Rangers fan. I couldn't give a hoot, you know, about the whole so sectarian nonsense. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Um, I've got Barry Ferguson shirt on my wall. I've got his UEFA Cup shirt. I've got his league shirt. Too far. I've got... I've got a, I, I've got I've got strips in here from people that are Rangers players, uh, Alec Ray, lots of people. I don't care. I really don't care. I, I, what I care about, I love football, and I was brought up in a in a family where I was taught to watch football in two teams in the park, and then the next day, if you wanted to go to church or chapel or call it what you will and believe in your God or not, you did that, but you never mixed the two. But we're in a situation here which I think is unhealthy. I think it's unhealthy for... I don't like to see Rangers being ostracised. I've certainly got no time for the people that we don't... You know, everybody hates us, we don't care. I've got no time for these people. I could walk down Buchanan Street and I'd never meet them. They're never in my world. Even if they stop to say hello to me, they're not in my world. I don't deal with that. I deal with the situation which is quite simply, if Neil Doncaster has been threatened, if there has been an allegation, a defamatory one, he has to deal with that. The SPFL have released it, fine. If Rangers feel as if they've been wronged in some way, they put together a dossier. But the dossier that we're commenting on, the suggestion was that there was bullying and coercion. That's what we've got to deal with. Whether somebody's added corruption in from the media, fine. But if Neil Doncaster has acted in in inappropriately and there's been impropriety, and that was the word, Ruffy, impropriety, if there is any suggestion of it and proof then Neil Doncaster and Rod McKenzie will have to face up to it. That's something that we're not denying. If they, if they are guilty of anything, then they're going to have to face up to it. What the punishment will be, we don't know. Yeah, but I, I think that's why some people might want to get these questions out there and get the answers to them. There, there, there's a lot. Of, I think over the next two days, I think there'll be more stuff will come out. And you have to digest that as well. And then it'll be up to the clubs to decide. But I would like to think if the clubs decide it's a no-no, then it's a no-no. It's finished. It's gone. Uh, let's move on to something else you've lost, you've already touched on. Let's move on to who wins the league and who doesn't. And then we'll have another one. You know, and let's see where that goes. And then you've got league reconstruction. And you've also said that. Let's see where that goes. We could be sitting here August talking about all this. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope we, I hope we expand the leagues. Not, not because Barry's on the show. I mean, two weeks ago, Tam, I was getting in the, in the, in the neck for being a jambo because I wanted to save hearts. I wanted to save <laughs> hearts, and I wanted to save Partick Thistle uh, because it's not fair to relegate a club when you can still get to a situation where, from yep. their point of view, and we, and by the way, I'm open to this next one because they could escape relegation, and equally so. I know that Rangers fans say we could have caught Celtic. Now, my my assessment of that is, that's fine. You know, Stephen Gerrard's already said we wanted to fight right to the end. Absolutely. But sooner or later, Null and Void was off the table from way, way back. They're going to have to call the league. And when they call the league, they'll be calling it on the, on the basis of the remaining games. Was there a likelihood that Rangers were going to win all their games and Celtic were going to lose a sufficient amount for Rangers to win the league? I don't think it was as close a call as as in in, in, in the Netherlands. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did anybody think Rangers were going to come back and win the league? No, I don't think they were. Peter, listen, I, I just feel that no, no club should be at disadvantage. Every club is struggling at the minute. You know, they're all struggling to, to, to survive. You know, clubs round about the bottom hearts, big club, Partick Thistle, you know, keep them in the league. Reconstruction, bring Kelty and Brora in. Every club is, is positive. It's something to look forward to and we can crack on and look ahead. You know, if you start relegating clubs, you know, I don't think it's fair on Hearts, don't think it's fair on Thistle. Even Stranrath technically could have still got out of it. You know, listen, let's let's reconstruct the leads and, uh, and and look ahead and, and look forward because as you said earlier, there's no point in us looking back. You know, there's no point in it. Look forward with positivity and, and, and try and get a better product in Scotland. Yeah, don't worry, I haven't frozen. It was just the first moment of calm we've had on the show. <laughs> <laughs> For about an hour and ten minutes. And, and breathe. You, uh, uh, listen, you'll need to chill out the night. You'll need to have a few glasses oh, of red the night. Honestly, I mean, I, I look at my wife sometimes and I say, you know, should we really be opening that second bottle? <laughs> but I have to say to you, I'll be like, get the third one and get the southern yeah. comfort out. I'm getting uh, rat arsed. I thought you were going to say something else. You look at your wife and think, you're a Rangers fan. <laughs> no, I know, no, I'm the same. Totally it's only a joke. Yeah. It's only a know, joke. But, oh, listen, it's, uh, it's absolutely... It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's funny, actually, uh, one of my uh, pals from Paisley, we lived in Edinburgh. I, Tom, this is the, the, the best thing ever. We lived in Great Junction Street in Leith in a flat. And my pal who's from Paisley, he's absolutely mental. And for nine years, all he did, he, he got up in the morning and he had his Rangers McCune's Lager t- uh, sh- uh, <laughs> Rangers shirt on with them and they were sponsored by McCune's Lager. And for nine years, Tom... <laughs> When I was in that flat with him, Rangers just kept winning the league, <laughs> and he gave it. He gave it to me every day, every day. Um, but you know, that, the banter, the banter is magnificent. But the 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 other people, I, you know, I don't think any of us. We don't mix with them. The only time we mix with them is when we pick Ruffy the wrong venue for the Christmas party and Barry gets absolute belters. O'Neill's in the Merchant City. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Listen, we all, Tam's we all, took we all the heat get... off me, to be fair. Let's be honest, Tam's took the heat off me. The amount of yeah. stuff he comes out with on that Twitter. Oh, my God. Oh, Barry, mm. I don't know if you noticed, but did you notice that 10 minutes into the show, Tam kept going down and putting a hanky out as he was sweating? <laughs> I, I, was, I was wondering if that was, I was wondering, was because that was him looking down at the notes on his 200 page dossier. He was sweating <laughs> profusely. It's not, it's not, listen, Peter, it's not, it's not our bag. You know, we want to be on here talking about football and that, that's who uh, our I think that's it. That, that's what you want to talk about, and the, the legal, the legal, the legal jargon, uh, as Ruffy says, is nowhere, is nowhere back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, I, I, I didn't have anything. Uh, I didn't have anything else as far as notes are concerned. I, I actually said to all the boys today, we're going to mention a couple of things. I mean, yesterday I managed to, uh, through the, the, the good grace of of Darren, we managed to get a chat with uh, Naim. 
because it's 25 years on Sunday since Naeem hit that absolute raker uh, for Real Zaragoza against Arsenal uh, to win the Cup Winners' Cup for Real Zaragoza in the, the last 10 seconds of that match. And I thought, what a great interview that is. But as soon as we got to this morning, I thought to myself, wow, Naeem's going to sit well when we're in World War Three, Ruffy, with the SPFL, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, t- talk about drop off. I was wondering. I said to our producer, I- "I'm not quite sure when we're going to get the Naeem interview in, because we'll all be arguing and going mental about this." Um, uh, Barry, uh, just just as a, a footnote to this, and I'm, I'm, we're obviously going to play out uh, the Naeem interview as well, but just as a footnote, how do you think? Um, this is going to pan out. I mentioned I think Stuart Robertson's place on the board I think is going to be very difficult to retain. How do you think it's going to pan out as far as what would you like to see happen? I would like to see them try and sit around the table, Peter, if I'm being honest with you, and try and be um, men about it and admit that both sides, listen, the SPFL and Rangers, have made some mistakes, but also they've made some good points. So the outcome here would be, if, as you mentioned, Peter, five minutes ago when you were having your rant, it's all about just moving forward. Forget about what's happened in the past. Can we not do that? Can we not just let's try and get back to what we do best, and that's getting our football up and running when, it, when we make clubs survive, making sure the welfare of all the players are, are fine and when they're running out of contracts. That, for me, is the most important thing. And also, yeah, and Rangers and the SPFL need to try and sort out their, their money war. It's basically a money war that's going on between the two of them, Peter. That's as yeah, best as uh, I can put it. it. It's a poor sideshow, Ruffy. That's what's going on at the moment now. And, and I, don't think, <clears throat> I don't think the current circumstances should be about Rangers and the SPFL. It should be about the collective... Yeah, it should be about the collective, and I think the vote will tell us that. Uh, I, I think when the, all the clubs vote, they will decide, you know, is there something or isn't there something? And, and if there isn't, then, as the guys have said, we move on. Uh, and if there is something that the clubs do want to to look further into it, then let's look further into it. But <coughs> let's not, like, dwell about, you know, it dragging on and on, because as we've said on the show on numerous occasions, there's too many other things around the corner. So... Let's get the vote out the road and then we can decide after that. Yeah, full apologies to everybody on Facebook. Apparently the subtitles were coming up on the show for the last couple of days. I think we might have remedied it, but, uh, uh, you know, it was coming up constantly. And uh, so, uh, apologies for everybody uh, when uh, Tam was speaking. There were a few big I words in there, which, 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 which ta- Tam, Tam never used these big words, didn't know the meaning of them, and would like Boffin. to apologise to, uh, to, to anybody who Boffins. thinks it's brilliant. <laughs> exactly, to brilliant. think that Tam was using uh, any word long Longer than seven or eight letters. Um, so Tam refutes that and he'll be taking legal action against anybody that puts <laughs> Tam, the subtitles up again. Right, Tam, Tam, can I just ask you a quick question, please? Aye. Right, how, how long did it take you to read that 200 page uh, dossier? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it took me about two hours. Uh, it took me about That's two good. and a half hours and read it for back to front. Yeah. Obviously, there was no pictures in it for you, so you'd have been. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. As I no, said, no. listen, mate. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait for the bullet points to come out. That's what you do. Yeah. Well, well, to, be fa- to, to be fair, he, I didn't give you the bullet points. Uh, there's, there's no point in asking Ruffy if you read it because yeah. the first ten, the first ten minutes suggest to me that he didn't read it or understand <laughs> it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, but uh, anyway, apart from this. Um, you know, thank you to the many people who uh, like, share and follow us on Facebook. We really do appreciate it. Uh, and if ho- hopefully you'll tell your friends. And, and if your friends are of sane mind, then we would love to have them fo- following us on Facebook. <laughs> as far as YouTube's concerned, uh, YouTube uh, as well, you can subscribe to our channel. And you'll get the football show Monday to Friday uh, at four o'clock where we try and digest what has been said. And of course, offer uh, an opinion once we go back over the uh, the facts on this. Uh, the answer to uh, the quiz, would you believe, uh, was twenty fifteen was the answer we were looking for for twenty fifteen. Um, should we let's have a vote on this, guys? Because you you three can have a vote on it. Sh- 
<laughs> uh, oh, I forgot to ask you, Tam, what would you like to see happen? Um, I agree with Barry. Listen, I, I want him to ground the table. Listen, can we just call it a draw? I mean, uh, both, side, both sides are going to go back and forth. It's going to drag on for months. If it goes to court, there's more important things to worry about. Let's get around the table, you know, and just have a truce. For the sake of Scottish football, have a truce. Call it a draw. Even if it isn't a draw, call it a draw. And then move on and try and, say, try and get down to the more important things, a, a safeguard in the clubs, uh, safeguard in the future, and looking after football players who, at the end of this month, about a contract, without a wage, and uh, with mental health and everything that comes with that. It's a really tough time for football players as well. As it is for everyone. So come, I, I, I'm just sick. I'm, I'm sick talking talking about it. I'm sure you guys are as well. I'm sure the guys tuning in uh, with the comments and different things are sick listening to it. I, I just want it to go away in some sort of you know some sort of way. Yeah, uh, Mel Irving says, Peter, I was hoping for a shout out for my dad, Ricky. It's his birthday on Sunday. Uh, it's not an ideal uh, situation in isolation if you have your birthday. Uh, nothing worse. You'd like your family around you. You want the cuddles, you want the presents and everything. So, Ricky, uh, I hope you have a great birthday on Sunday and uh, maybe all the family gets back together after we get out of lockdown, whenever that is. Uh, Marty happy birthday, Ricky. Yeah, good point, Tom. Yes, happy birthday. Um, Thanks, Thanks Ruffy. Yeah. Happy birthday, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, there you are. <laughs> Look at the sentiment <laughs> in Barry's face there. And then, of course, uh, Marty McGarrigal has said, uh, please don't mention the numpties with all their silly comments. It's only drawing attention to them. Ignore it. Marty, you're probably right, but the only problem I have with it is a lot of people do make complaints to us and send uh, emails and messages to us about some of the posts that they're reading on the the show and it spoils it for them and and one of the things that i do like to do on this station rightly or wrongly and i i constantly assess it every day guys and i don't know if you agree or what you do with it i think if we don't speak up for the positive people in life and the people who have had a good upbringing and can look at things sensibly i think if we don't speak up for them the only voices we will ever hear are negative people who are abusive, the minority that we really don't want to mix with. I don't yeah. know how you feel about it, Ruffy, but if we don't start shouting for the majority, I think we're lost. Yeah, you're right. You know, but fortunately, the majority are the people who phone the show uh, and have good points and, and like listening to the banter for the guys and everything. Uh, and you're right, you know, we don't want to get in that road. Uh, we know who these people are and uh, we don't really want to get involved with them anyway, you know, because they don't, they're not got the best interest of the football at heart. They're just one of our goal people. Right. Can I go negative, Peter? Can I go negative, people? No time for yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, guys, uh, you know, if, you, if I get back here after the Naeem interview and you're not there, I will fully understand. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm always, I'm always certain when you hear the naive interview, I'll come back and there'll just be a, an empty chair where Ruffy used to sit because <laughs> he, he'll be away. No, no. I'll be here. Is that you, you giving us permission to go? Yeah, you, 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 honestly, honestly, I, I mean, the guy is a, he's a gem of a guy. I caught him, up, I caught up with him in Zaragoza in Spain, uh, and I think it's w worthy of you listening to him because he scored a wonder goal. Uh, Peter, and himself twenty-five years, somebody different. Yeah. Peter, was that the guy? Was that the guy that lobbed semen? It was indeed, and thank God some, we didn't some, have him on yesterday. Something that Ruffy's been doing for years. <laughs> Absolutely. And on that How note, and I knew, Pierre? Oh, I, I, it's only about four minutes. Oh, that's all right. I'll stay on. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, on that note, uh, he played for Real Zaragoza. He played for Tottenham. Won an FA Cup medal with him as well. Uh, and of course, he's a lovely man. Came from North Africa. Uh, there's Tam away already. That's a <laughs> disgrace, isn't it? Unbelievable, McManus. You're a disgrace. So I'm phoning Naeem to tell him. Anyway, here's, here's what happened when I caught up with Naeem. Well, I'm delighted to say joining us on the football show today is a man synonymous with a wonder goal and, of course, the friend to so many people who support Tottenham Hotspur in London. Our special guest is Naeem. First question, Naeem, are you safe and well? Is your family safe and well? Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in Saragossa. Uh, my family is back home in Ceuta, but uh, we are well, all well, thanks. Uh, thank God. Um, well, you know, we're just staying at home, being, uh, you know, in that, uh, you know, quarantine and all that. 
Because all the things that's happening now in the world is unbelievable. It's crazy. But we are safe. Thanks very much. Thanks. We are, uh, we are yeah. fine. Uh, that's good to good to hear. Um, of course, I mentioned there that you are synonymous with a, a wonder goal for, of course, Real Zaragoza. But uh, I think there's much more to your career than that. Um, let yeah. me start first. Let me start first of all by suggesting you know anyone would give their right arm uh, to play for Barcelona. Was that one of your dreams as a boy? Absolutely, I was uh, a Barcelona fan when I, when I was a little boy, and imagine when uh, I had the chance to. To join the club uh, when I was 15, you know, in the youth team in La Masia, uh, I had uh, when I've been uh, I've been there for six seasons, four four years in the in the youth. In La, uh, it was a great time with uh, Guardiola, Tito Villanova, uh, Guillermo Amor, and more, you know, a lot of uh, uh, good players. At the end, they they made it in the first team as well and uh, had uh, great careers. And uh, it was a dream come true for a, a young boy from a small small town in. Uh, in North Africa, to to join a, a, a club like Barcelona, and uh, I really, really, really enjoyed it. And uh, it was an unbelievable time to to just sleep next to the no cam, and uh, you know, you know see the, the no cam through the window every morning, and and try to to make your your dream come true. I know injury curtailed your ambitions at Barcelona, but when you moved to England, it was a very special man held dear by Barcelona fans as well, Terry Venables, who signed you. How did that move come about? Well, uh, um, first of all, uh, Terry Venables uh, was the manager that gave me a chance to to play uh, in the first team in, in, in Barcelona. And, and then when he, when he went to Tottenham, you know, he heard that uh, I wasn't uh, playing uh, with uh, with Barcelona, and uh, you know, I had a call from from him telling me if he wanted me to to join Tottenham, and I didn't think about it much. <laughs> I said, uh, of course, you know, when uh, the a manager wants a player, is uh, the best place to be because he, you know he looks after you, and uh, that's what happened in uh, at Tottenham. My first year was so uh, alone. Uh, and then uh, I signed uh, four more seasons and had really, really good ta- uh, time with, uh, with Gaza, Chris Waddle, Vinny Samuels, uh, Gary Mabot, a lot of uh, great players. Gordon Jury was there uh, uh, at the time, Scottish guy, and um, it was uh, one, uh, one of the biggest signings we, we had uh, uh, years, years, late, years later. And uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, a chance for me to, to just... Uh, to do my job and uh, to play football, that's my passion, you know what I mean? Uh, not, many, not many boys from North Africa get the chance to actually say they have an FA Cup winner's medal in their pocket, <laughs> uh, which is absolutely superb. I mean, what are your memories of that special day? I mean, uh, it was unbelievable to play in that atmosphere. Um, you know, to play at Wembley it, it was one of the, uh, the big, biggest thing in my in my career, To to play in that atmosphere was uh, it was crazy with uh, you know August 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 Forest in ninety one. Uh, I remember the game that uh, Gaza Gaza got injured uh, after fifteen minutes and uh, I was on the bench. I just uh, went in because uh, because of his injury and uh, and in that free kick I remember Stuart Peace scored that stunner, uh, uh, great goal, right in the top corner. And I said, "Well, Naim, you you are in big trouble in this game <laughs> because you know the best the best player we had is is, is injured. The, the player that got us to the final that was Gaza, and uh, well, we were uh, you know lucky enough at, at the end to to win that that game. And mostly, uh, I was the first Spanish player to play to play in England, the first Muslim and the first one to to win uh, that FA Cup, and that was." Uh, you know, uh, crazy after 25 years, just people still remember that game uh, at Spurs. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely magnificent. And of course, you should uh, feel very proud, uh, as I know, with your absolutely. background as well. Um, you talked about so many players that you rhymed off there. Um, uh, is there one particular player that you thought, ah, this is special, this is, is a joy to play with? Absolutely. It just, uh, uh, my first training when I saw Gaza training, I said to myself, "Flipping hell, this guy just—I uh, never saw a, a guy like 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 him. 
uh, so good, uh, so skillful, uh, so competitive, and uh, uh, and he took us to the final. I, I remember that it was easy to play with uh, you know with that kind of talent uh, in that team. But Gaza was uh, the guy that uh, made the difference uh, every single game. He was uh, it was a different class player. Uh, at the end, it's a shame that you know the, the love he had after after football, but. Uh, but he was a good-hearted man. Uh, we used to live together in a, in a hotel. Uh, had a great life with him because he's always joking and, and laughing. He's, he was like a, a little boy in a, in a, a man body. Uh, but uh, when he was on the pitch, that's right. When he was on the on the pitch, he was just a, a different class player. One of the best in the world, if not the best at that time. Yeah, I'm amazed you said that you you lived in a hotel with him as well. I'm amazed you still have hair on your head because <laughs> because, because he, he used to pull a few fr a few pranks, didn't he? He loved to laugh. Yeah, absolutely. My fr three first months, I couldn't speak uh, much English. It was a nightmare with him. He was laughing at me all the time. You know, you know, teaching me a bad words, uh, teaching me how to swear, <laughs> and uh, but. That he was, uh, you know, it's funny. It was funny. He's a good-hearted man, you know. And uh, we had great time with Paul Stewart, Eric Thorford, and Woody Bergson. Uh, at that time, we used to live together in that hotel. And the meals, he was just, uh, you know, laughing for two or three hours non-stop with that guy. It was just crazy. It was, it yeah. was mad. <laughs> it was <laughs> nuts, but uh, very nice man. Uh, great memories. I know the Tottenham fans still hold you very dear in their heart for your time uh, wearing the jersey. Uh, of course, you moved on to Real Zaragoza, um, closer to home. Um, that side was a very, very good team. I mean, a lot of people may well look at uh, you know winning the Cup Winners' Cup and the focus is all about Arsenal, but you had some very good players in that team. Absolutely. Uh, very talented team. Uh, with great players, uh, we played really good football. Uh, I remember that final that we struggled with our first half an hour because you know we didn't have the the experience that Arsenal had in the finals because they were the you know the winners of the the last cup winners cup uh, title and um, well we we should have won the the game uh, before before my goal. Because uh, after half an hour, we start play our football, and with the players we had in that team in Zaragoza, very very talented going forward, and uh, uh, a lot of people, you know, they were saying, uh, you know, the way we we played, and uh, it was uh, it was crazy. It was easy for, uh, for for me to to play with that kind of bunch of, of players. What a talent! It was really enjoyable to 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 have a team that you know. He's just trying to go forward and make chances, and with that talent, it was it was so easy. Yeah, you you had Aragon, you had Higuera in there, you had Gustavo Poyet. Of course, it's Snyder scores the first goal. John Hartson equalizes. But if I were a boy writing a comic book, I would pick a wonder goal in injury time, in extra time to win the cup. I mean, first of all, what was going through your mind when that ball dropped to you? Well, I, I remember that uh, we had I, I had the, the ball to my chest uh, uh, f from Gillingham. Uh, he, he cleared the ball and, and he came to my to my chest. And uh, it was you know the ball was bouncing at the time because I didn't have pressure with uh, from any Arsenal player. I had time to to think about two or three seconds. I t just put my head up and uh, see my teammates like Pardesa and, and Snyder. They could might be in, in, in offside position. And at the same time, I saw, I saw them that they, they could be in the offside position. I saw David Seaman off the line. Not, not much, but uh, enough to, to try, you know, the, to, to surprise, you know, surprise him. And uh, that's, what, that's what happened, you know. I said, this is, uh, you know, the ball was just in the perfect mm, bouncing moment to just uh, to kick it. And uh, that's what I, you know, that's what I, just, I thought. I thought, uh, this is my chance. See if we can make it. Obviously, when I kicked the ball, uh, you know, I felt that uh, it was, uh, you know, a good strike. But uh, you need to, you know, uh, the, to the goalkeeper to have a little mistake. To and he had that half a second to think about it, and uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, um, uh, it just made that made that that mistake that uh, um, you know didn't have time to to go back to to, to save the the, the ball. 
Yeah, I mean, you are in uh, uh, one of two footballers who've managed to uh, lob David Seaman, Naeem, and of course, uh, Ronaldinho in the World Cup against England as well with his wonder free kick. Um, so two very, very good footballers with a wonderful memory. Just before we finish, Naeem, tell me what that goal means to you. Was that the best moment in your life? Absolutely. It changed my life. I mean, that moment changed the, the life of all, uh, all that, those footballers, all, the, all that bunch of players. Uh, it was uh, the best time in my, in my career. It's uh, you know, a dream goal to, to win a title, or a European title in the last second, and the extra time and the way we, we did it. Obviously, it changed my life for good. Uh, and now I, you know, I'm known uh, ev everywhere. And uh, they still stopping me here, to uh, thanking me, and uh, it was it was just uh, the best time in my life. Uh, Naeem, it's been an absolute joy chatting to you about that wonderful memory twenty five years ago. Uh, stay safe. Best wishes to your family, and thank you for joining us. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Ah, there you are. Uh, there's Naeem. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at McManus. It's a disgrace. But just before you go, guys, and you'll never believe this, just before you go, um, I'm about to tell you a little bit of news uh, that's coming in that obviously has implications for yourself, Barry. Um, because coming up over all the news networks at the moment is uh, that it looks as if the prospect of league reconstruction for next season has been quashed. Um, the Scottish Premiership clubs have admitted there isn't enough support for any changes at this time. Um, so they've had a meeting. It looks as if there's not enough support, which means that Hearts, Partick, Thistle and Stranraer uh, would be relegated. So I'm, I'm suddenly looking at this news that is breaking, which looks as if we're going to stay with exactly the same setup as before, because a, a number, a number of clubs uh, are worried about the money that's going to be distributed, whether they can afford to bring in two additional clubs, and certainly there's no desire for restructuring. Ruffy, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, it's obviously disappointing for for a lot of clubs. You know, I, I don't get that there isn't enough time to see this through. We've got all the time in the world just now, but what's going on? It'd be disappointing, but I mean, as far as our club's concerned, you know, if that's it, that's where we are, that's where we'll be. You know, we'll get on with it. We'll do, you know, what we usually do. And uh, if that's the decision of the the people at the top, you can't change it. The, the, the 11 to 1 vote is horrendous. I don't feel, I feel sorry for us. I feel sorry for obviously Barry's team as well. It seems a bit soon again. It seems a bit soon to be making decisions like this when we, it could be discussed. I mean, what what is actually the committee? What is the committee of the 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 championship and the two teams who have a delegation who have been sitting discussing this for the last fortnight? You know, does that well, mean that's a waste uh, of time? <laughs> a waste a waste of people's time? Well, as as I mentioned to you before, Ruffy, this was always going to be fraught with danger because it needed before it even got to the committee to get the whole thing together as a task force. Once the task force digested it, discussed it, it still needed 11-1 in the vote from the Premiership before it even went to the other divisions. So suddenly we're in a situation where it looks scuppered. I've got to, to get the, the immediate thoughts of yourself on this, Barry. What do you think about this? Well, I'm disappointed, uh, Disappointed, obviously, Peter. Um, my general manager was actually trying to phone when Naeem's interview was on there, so I was wondering why he was phoning, so obviously that's the reason. Um, I know you were saying about the 11-1 vote uh, regarding the, the Premier League, but the League 2 clubs never wanted us in, Peter. I say that at the start. There's definitely a fear that there's ambitious and driven clubs want to come in and they don't want any sort of clubs like ourselves, like a number of teams in the Lowland League and Brora up in the Highland League, so Disappointing, Peter. I set myself up away at the start. I was either going to get good news or bad news on it, and it's obviously bad news. And a lot of hard work over the 18 months. Um, certainly, the last 12 months been an important one. We uh, revamped my full squad and getting players into to try and win us the, the league. And obviously, we got awarded the league. And basically, a lot of work done for nothing. There seems to be a suggestion that they will revisit it 
for next year when it was originally planned. Um, but I, I'm presuming that doesn't cut any ice with you as well. No, it, it doesn't, Peter. In terms of the way the obviously the football environment uh, environment up here is going, the now we've not got any source of income, um, and the the backer that puts our money. He put sorry his money in his businesses are are closed at this moment in time. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen going forward in terms of, of budgets and whatever. I'll need to have a, a chat with, with him over the weekend, Peter, and I'll have probably a lot more to say on it. What way Kelly as a club is going to go forward? But disappointing in the in the call there because I, I seriously thought. I mean, you've said it plenty of times, Peter. We've been rambling on about this for the past couple of years. I think it was an ideal opportunity for us to go and try and reconstruction uh, and try and move forward, think out the box, do something different for Scottish football. But obviously they've came to a decision which I'm really disappointed in. And as I said, I'll need to speak to the general manager and see what way we go forward. Yeah, I mean, Kelty will have to obviously assess things and give a re reaction. Just on the point of yourself personally, do you have to go away and contemplate what you're doing? Yeah, I'll come down to. I mean, I've got to be honest with you, Peter. The the board and certainly the general manager who puts his own hard earned cash into the club, and um, they put a lot of into it into my budget to try and get us that championship and give us that opportunity to play in the playoff. Um, to give us a chance of getting into the SPFL so there will obviously be a lot of thinking and a lot of talking going on Peter over the weekend and then I'll need to obviously assess what way the, the club's going forward and so will the club obviously but the, the club come first, the club have got to survive this Peter and as you know lower league football there's going to be a lot of clubs struggling through this um, but I can't really comment on what way the club will go forward until I do speak to the general manager, Dean. Yeah. Peter, Tom? is there any, is it, yeah. did Peter, is there any knowledge of uh, how the voting went on that? Or no, that, I think they uh, put that out? Yeah, I think it's come across all media outlets, uh, Ruffy, and the general feeling from the, the 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 tone of it is quite simply that because of the cash uh, that's going to be available to everyone, uh, reconstruction quashed for this season maybe a look at it uh, for next season, um, but there's no real desire and there's been no mention of a breakdown of who's voted how many or how many are in favour. I think it's a gauge of uh, the Premiership clubs to see if there was enough. And remember, in enough, you're talking 11-1. That's how it, it has to be emphatic before it was going to get through. And this is something, again, we discussed as well, Ruffy, how difficult, you mentioned how difficult it would be to get an 11-1 in the first place. Yeah. No, I said right at the start when the committee was drawn up to decide the, the way forward, I would rather have had the vote that you've just put out there the now before these people went down that road and we all started talking about 14-10-10-10, 14-14. And I would rather have known now, as we know now, what way the bigger teams are going to go because it would have saved people a lot of trouble in the last 14 days. You know, a lot of people have been putting hard work into it, you know, and making all the calls and everything. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of response you get from all these people who have been working extremely hard to bring Scottish football together. And again, it looks as if the powers that be have made this decision over money. Yeah. It's, just, it's just incredible. Tom, Peter, I can read this out. I yeah, I need to read this out to you, Tom, and then yep. I'll get your thoughts on it. Um, from the Aberdeen chairman, uh, Dave Cormark, uh, on SPFL league reconstruction talks collapsing, whilst the Premiership sympathises with the uh, situation relegated teams are faced with, it concluded that this isn't the right time to consider immediate reconstruction in the midst of a crisis. I think it's a joke. I think it's a joke. I think it, you, you've got a system, you've got a pyramid system in Scotland where you've got the Highland League, you've got the Lowland yeah. League, they should be given an opportunity to get into the league. They've played 30 odd games, you know, they've won the league, they've been declared champions, and they're not even getting a playoff against a bottom team. I think it's an absolute scandal. I, I think it's totally wrong, and I really have sympathy with the clubs that have got relegated, 
t- particularly Hearts, you know, my next Hibs player, but I have a lot of sympathy for Hearts. I don't think they should get relegated. For Partick Thistle, for Stranraer, and for Broader Rangers and uh, Kelty Hearts, I think it's an absolute disgrace that they're getting robbed of an opportunity to come into the league. Yeah, Peter, can I quickly say something? Um, they cancelled the playoff game, and it's got to go four ways. And the SPFL cancelled the playoff game from obviously ourselves and Brora to play then bottom of League Two. But it's in the rules that it's got to be agreed by the four um, associations. And that was done without that. I, I've got it. I caught the, the, the tail end of that about it being in the rules. Just, just one quick thing before we finish here. Uh, the, the news coming out, guys, and I think this is the the key issue here. Uh, just to, because it's just broken in the last half hour, I, I think the key here, uh, Ruffy, is that I think maybe I know you said you, you you're going to have to get on with it. Partick this will get on with it. I think there might be legal action from Hearts now. I think there's no doubt about that, uh, Peter. Uh, and Budge has said all along, you know, that that is a, something she will go down the road with. Uh, it's a lot of money you're talking about, you know, dropping out of that Premiership. I've experienced it myself with Partick Thistle. Yeah, they are going to be down maybe a million and a half, two million pounds. Is that worth fighting for? You would say so, but whether they'll get anything out of it is, is, is another thing. I just think it's like, damn, I think it's incredible, you know, to say because of. There's no time involved, did it? And how long have they been discussing it for? You know, how long has it been on the table? Have they just met the day and then just said, no, this is the feeling? It is an incredible thing, decision to come. And I mean, I, I do believe with the Sky deal we've got is a better deal financially. And people were saying that they, they, the money could be distributed a lot more easily. But it, for me, looking for the outside, it just looks like greed on behalf of self preservation. Yep. Yep. Looking after number well, one. Can, Peter, yeah, can I, I just say that we, we, we came out with a statement um, which I wasn't privy to and I wasn't in the discussions with um, our board. And they came out and says that they would forfeit the money for next season. Because we would obviously gain it from gates, like bigger crowds getting into a, obviously a bigger league. So we we were prepared to forfeit the the payments. Yeah, I know that release came out and I mentioned it uh, yesterday uh, with regards to, um, you know, Brora, their chairman said that they didn't want to forfeit the payments. Uh, yeah. And I, th- I think, Barry, it was admirable uh, uh, of your board to, to mention that they didn't want any money um, to try and ease uh, the pain of other clubs who might have been obsessed by it or, or worried about it. But I don't think you should have had to make that statement in the first place. At the end of the day, no, collectively, uh, yeah. everybody had to. Everybody has to look and say the merits of what's at stake, mm. the circumstances we're in, the implications for all clubs. They should not have had to. You shouldn't have had to say we'll not take the money. Everybody should have been yeah. brought in and said this is for the benefit of all, and it hasn't happened. I think Hearts have got uh, big questions that they will obviously be putting to the SBFL over the next uh, couple of days. I think you know, never mind the war between Rangers and the SBFL. Uh, there's a few battles coming ahead, Tam, that I can see after that <coughs> announcement in the last half hour. Yeah, I think I think Hearts will Hearts will take this all the way. I think they've got to. You know, I think they've got to take this all the way and try and everything they can to stay in the league. I think it's unfair with games to go that they've been relegated. Same with Partick Thistle. But can they afford to, can they afford that legal action? That's the yeah. thing. Can they afford to can they afford to do it? We Peter, all through the show all through the show we've been talking about getting this other thing we were talking about out the road and getting Scottish football together and getting us all moving forward. This is another episode that'll just make more bad feeling throughout all the, the teams. And it's not moving anybody forward at all. It's just making everybody, not everybody, but a lot more people more angry when we should be talking about positive things rather than negative. And I think we're going to leave it at that. I think that's the best way to sum it up. I've, I've had my rant. Um, Barry's offered his reaction to that news that's just come out. Tam's obviously going to down that bottle of whiskey that he had on the chair only moments ago. Mm. Um, I, so I wish I could uh, come up and join him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and 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 I think that that's sums it up. Feeling. It's uh, it's a it's a tough day for Barry. It's certainly something that I think Partick Thistle uh, and Ruffy and his board will have to contemplate. And I think 
Tam was right to highlight the situation that Hearts will be facing as well. The only thing I'm going to say uh, to finish with, uh, with regards to the football issues, if you do like our content, don't forget to like, share and follow us on Facebook. Uh, if you are indeed on YouTube, thank you very much for sticking with us as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get lots of great content. And of course, uh, we'll try and be as honest, as balanced and as fair as we possibly can uh, about football because we are a football show. I leave you tonight with an image which I think sums up what this country's all about when everyone gets together for the common good. 75 years ago, Winston Churchill uh, stood on a balcony and said everybody should celebrate uh, VE Day, victory in Europe when the Allies defeated Germany. Um, we maybe should take a lesson from all the people who got together for the benefit of everyone rather than the few. Uh, from everyone here, we should never forget soldiers, family members and everybody who put their lives on the line for us. From PLZ Soccer, have a safe weekend and an enjoyable one. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.